made by people like you. Your community. Your radio. Your Preston FM. So nice to welcome my guests into the studio, my first guest this afternoon, and that's Graham Tobin and Vida West from the Remedy Centre for Health in Preston. So a very good afternoon to you both. Nice to meet you again. Hi, Huey. Good to see you again. So this afternoon's topic or topics... Uh, This afternoon we're going to be talking about polycystic ovary syndrome, or PCOS, as it's shorthand. (laughs) Uh, So yes, Graham and I are from the the, um, Preston Herbal Clinic, which is based at the Remedy Centre of Health in Ashton, Preston, and we're both practicing medical herbalists. So polycystic ovary syndrome is a common disorder and it affects women of reproductive age And it's basically a disruption of the endocrine system and causes period problems, reduced fertility, excess hair growth and acne. Of course, um, one of the things, Vida, is that um, that sort of clinical picture with the symptoms isn't present in every woman, is it? It's not, which is really, really important to remember because, you know, some people may have some of those symptoms. They may be more severe or less severe um, or mild in some people. Um, so the way that it's diagnosed is, of course, uh, by blood test, biochemistry, and then by ultrasound. Yeah, yeah. So it's, um, you know, it's it's actually, it tends to affect estimated according to the NHS guidelines. It's one in five women in the UK has polycystic ovaries, but more than half of these don't have any symptoms. So it, it does seem to affect quite a lot of people, women. Um and what normally happens in healthy women is ovulation occurs every month. So what's basically happening is the follicles start to develop in the ovaries, but just one of these fully develops to become an ovum or an egg, which then goes into the fallopian tube, which leads to the uterus. So in polycystic ovary syndrome, you get a, tiny, uh, a number of tiny cysts or follicles developing in the ovaries, and these do not fully develop, and so ovulation doesn't happen. So as well as making eggs or ova, the ovaries also make various hormones, in particular estrogen and progesterone. But they also make small amounts of androgens, such as testosterone. So in polycystic ovary syndrome, the balance of hormones made by the ovaries changes. And in particular, the ovaries produce um, higher levels of androgens, such as testosterone. Um, And the balance, this imbalance... uh, produces some of the symptoms that we see that's right yeah. so so there's a there, there are excess levels of androgens in this condition and we'll, we'll, we'll mention what what symptoms they can produce in a minute but just for listeners to to understand what's what's interesting about those female hormones estrogen and progesterone is that estrogen is ever there it is the central female sex hormone progesterone is only present once ovulation has taken place the breakdown of the body that carried the egg out of the ovary um, the corpus luteum as it becomes is where progesterone is secreted so no ovulation no progesterone and the issue about how common this condition is one in five uh, women in the UK according to the NHS but other recent studies have suggested elsewhere and in the past it's been more like half that number so there's an increase going on and we're not sure where that's coming from but it might be um, from people having um, uh, hormone levels to test for infertility and then and then followed by ultrasound leads to the discovery, confirmation of the diagnosis of polycystic ovarian syndrome. So um, the symptoms, we've we've identified um, particular symptoms, irregular or light periods, or indeed no periods at all. Um, that These period problems occur in about 7 out of 10 women with PCOS. Um, and then there's the difficulty getting pregnant which may lead to the hormone tests in the first place. Um, This is because you may not be ovulating every month or at all in any month. Um, If there is an excess of the androgens, those hormones, um, for example, testosterone, which of course is the male hormone, 
then there may be excessive hair growth in the woman, a condition called hirsutism. Um, and that's usually on the face, the chest, the back or the buttocks. And generally the hair may thin um, and you could develop acne. Um, that could occur not in teenage years but uh, a bit later on. Um, other possible symptoms include weight gain. About 4 in 10 women with polycystic ovaries become overweight or obese. Um, depression or poor self-esteem may develop as a result of these and other symptoms. And there may be an increased risk of problems later in life, such as type 2 diabetes, uh, heart disease, uh, and um, co connected with high cholesterol levels. And when, as I mentioned earlier, these symptoms will vary in, in women. So some may have excess hair growth, some it may not be that um, big a problem. Some may have normal periods and fertility, but generally speaking, um, you would expect periods to get a bit longer or irregular. Um, it's also worth noting um, that it's worth getting a diagnosis because these symptoms can have other causes. So for example, um, hair loss could be due to um, stress or low iron levels, ferritin levels, or hypothyroidism. Um, you know, so it's it's worth kind of seeing getting a differential diagnosis. Uh, absolutely, I mean, you know, these things can be complex, as uh, we're, we're going to show in a minute. So it's really important to get um, a proper diagnosis made rather than think you've got such a condition and attempt to treat yourself. I mean, and these are all be things that we would go through in the consultation as well, wouldn't we? We'd be kind absolutely. of thinking, you know, is hypothyroidism a, an issue? And, and asking questions around that and, and um, trying to narrow it down. So the exact cause um, is actually unclear, but we know that several factors play a part. So firstly, we have insulin resistance. So the, the main role of insulin is to control blood sugar, but it also acts in the ovaries, causing them to produce androgens, such as testosterone. And insulin resistance is a condition in which the cells of the body become resistant to the hormone insulin. So this means that in order to keep blood sugar levels normal, the body produces more insulin. The higher level of insulin causes the ovaries to make too much testosterone and affects the development of the follicles in the ovaries. Being overweight can make insulin resistant worse and it actually creates a vicious cycle as high levels of insulin contribute to weight gain. So weight loss can be difficult. Yeah, so this starts to become quite complicated, doesn't it, Vida? It does. Uh, and so there are these syndromes that are now uh, well known, called the me metabolic syndrome, sometimes called syndrome X. That's going to be a combination of high blood pressure, um, uh, central obesity, that's where it's on your tummy, and we've heard quite a bit about that in the news recently uh, in, in women in relation to the risk of uh, breast cancer. Um, increased levels of, of fasting glucose, so when you go and have a glucose check and you're told not to have any breakfast, um, those levels are raised. Uh, higher levels of triglycerides and low levels of the good um, uh, lipoproteins, the HDLs. Uh, those are the low ones, um, low levels of, of, of the good HDL. So um, the, these are these are complicated issues that are all connected with that uh, epidemic we've got at the moment of obesity, stroke, diabetes. And so this could be a central causative factor in the development of PCOS. This is why um, things are very complicated and you really need to see someone about the diagnosis and then about the management of it. So Vida, what, um, this is complicated then, um, what can you tell our listeners today about uh, what they might do for, for managing the condition if they've been diagnosed with it? Okay, uh, well if weight is an issue, um, one thing would be to um, lose weight sensibly. And this doesn't mean going on these fatty diets where you do it for a few weeks and then you can't, you, you crave sugar or chocolate afterwards because you can't maintain it. Um, 
I would always say, you know, eat a healthy diet, have take regular exercise, do things that are enjoyable. Um, and losing that extra weight, if that is an issue, will help with the insulin resistance and and the symptoms. Um, as far as foods are concerned, as a general uh, advice, um, eating plenty of pulses and lentils, good, and whole grains. And actually whole grains and legumes um, are digested slowly. So they get a slower release of sugars into the bloodstream, which means you get more energy. So you want to increase um, whole grains, vegetables, and reduce refined carbohydrates, um, refined sugars. And another another um, source is to increase fiber and phytoestrogens, um, because that inc- in reduces antigen levels by increasing something we call sex hormone binding globulin, so it makes them less available. Um, but thing, th- things like chickpeas and flax have phytoestrogens in. Um, but then, you know, this is why ideally you need to get proper advice because phytoestrogens may not be suitable for everybody. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, you're flagging up that number one enemy nowadays, which is sugar. Yeah, it? sugars. Um, and it, the thing is, it's so easy to get into your diet, isn't it? You know, you biscuits in the cupboard and you're stressed or you're at work and you just need a quick fix. Um, but actually, it's so important to eat a proper diet and to, in my opinion, to be quite strict about it and to to really cut out those refined carbohydrates and sugars and make sure you're getting a nutritious, balanced diet. Um, you know, because we need those blood sugar levels to stabilise. That's right. So the slow release foods that you were describing, yeah. the whole grains, the pulses and so forth, yeah. that's that's one of the ways to do it, isn't it? How would how would herbs play a part here then, Vida? Well, the herbal support would vary depending on the person, um, but I'd be looking at herbs to rebalance the hormones. So I'd be wanting to decrease antigen levels and rebalance the estrogen and progesterone levels. I'd also want to um, consider decreasing insulin resistance and balancing blood sugar levels. So there are a range of herbs which which I could use, or we could use, um, and it would really depend on your presenting condition and and selecting the right ones. Um, And this is really, because it is complicated, this is really something I would say you really need to get professional advice about and not just take anything. And how would you, how would you uh, s- describe the evidence base for the, the, the herbs to do this job? What, what's the evidence out there for them? There is um, a fair bit of evidence, I believe, about the um, insulin-resistant herbs. Um, and, you know, there's, for example, one, one thing that you could get into your diet quite easily is something like spearmint tea. Research suggests it's, been, it's beneficial for reducing androgen levels. Um, and there, there's, you know, there's research on phytoestrogens and there's research on insulin resistance. Um, some of it, some herbs won't because it depends on funding and so forth. Some some herbs will be selected on traditional use. Uh, I don't know if you agree with that, Graham. Yes, I mean, but as you point out, uh, we we can describe these generally as phytoestrogens, mm. and there is some evidence out there yeah. about phytoestrogens. I mean, soy is a, a notable product that's been researched because of its isoflavone content you know Mm. clearly um, has an effect on on hormones so there is evidence out there and the reason why I was pushing that point Vida is is that um, in my experience women can be dissatisfied with with orthodox um, treatment strategies because often that's just putting the woman on the oral contraceptive pill now certainly it's really important to re-establish ovulation as quickly as possible mm. because if you if you're not having those periods there there is an increasing risk of endometrial cancer in the long run it's really important to get that established uh, but just going on the pill maybe not having some of the the dietary advice that you've given us um, might not might not be satisfactory to a number of women and so i think herbal medicine offers an alternative would Mm, you agree i would um definitely and i think as well the way that you would approach this you know with diet and lifestyle being a key factor as well really looking at a very holistic approach 
Um, you know, and if we think as well, you know, things like cardiovascular um, problems is a risk, isn't it? Um, we talked about elevated cholesterol levels and mm. so forth. So long term, you know, we, we really want to sort of help re- reduce all those and get everything working as it should, um, you know. So, but th- there's also, um, which I forgot about actually, there's research on peony and licorice being used in polycystic ovaries because um, they reduce androgen levels. Does that come from Chinese research? It does, it does. It's shown to be quite effective. And one thing with licorice, you've got to be careful if your blood pressure is too high. So we take all these things into, into consideration. Supervised treatment. Yeah. So I think that's us done there, Huey, on what's quite a complex topic, actually. Uh, so I hope um, at least uh, listeners could get something out of that. But also uh, a very interesting topic to discuss. So nice to see you again. And uh, back in October. That's right. Back back in our monthly seat. Uh, it's lovely to be back with you after the summer. And lovely to see you again. So thank you very much for coming on to Chat City this morning. Okay. Thank, thank you. For all the latest community news and events, 103.2 Preston FM. Your community, your radio.